what I was showing was this, which is uh, issue three. So this is the, the piece I was working on. Uh, it profiles five different artists who are working with signs and lettering in miniature. And, um, and as part of it, uh, we got this uh, poster insert uh, from Daniel. You can see all of the tiny little signs that were made for it. And then this identifies all of the artists. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Danielle because she's beaming in from New York. So we're going from the, the north of England to the to the northeast of the US. And uh, we're going to have a look inside uh, this studio in a closet or the closet studio, aka the Cludio. Uh, so <laughs> over to you, uh, Danielle. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep, coming through loud and clear. Gorgeous. Um, that was an amazing presentation. Thank you so much for that. Um, welcome to the Cludio. Um, I am in Queens, New York. So I can see the skyline of New York City from my bedroom window, from laying in bed. So I'm very close. I'm like this close to Manhattan, but just outside so that I can afford a little bit of a bigger apartment, but not a big enough studio. So just to give you a sense of the Cludio's smallness, I'll take you out here into my kitchen. And oh yeah, we just got McDonald's. <laughs> and that is my little closet. So what I did was when we moved in, we had the option of um, getting a washer dryer put in, which if you're not from New York City, you might not realize that having a washer dryer in New York is the literal top of the heap of amazing luxury. And my wife, who is the best person in the whole world was said, um, how about instead of a washer dryer, we make that closet your studio. So in an effort to not like mess anything up, I designed this sort of weird expandable, expanded wood frame that essentially is attached to itself and not into the wall. So there's like basically no holes in the wall or anything. And when I move, I can just take it out and it'll be like, it was never here. So, <laughs> um, but this is where it all happens. And I think probably why I started making miniatures to begin with about seven years ago, like for real, I mean, I'd always sort of made things and I was always an artist and always a maker, but when I really made this like, like a real art that I was going to pursue, certainly making small things made sense because I lived in New York City and we lived in an apartment in Manhattan that was super tiny. And um, all I had was like a little desk in a corner. <clears throat> so building small was very important. Um, and the first piece I ever made actually had a lot of signage. So let me just uh, actually take you guys off of here. A little easier if I do a little flippity flip of the uh let's see can I do that is it gonna let me yeah here we go please hold there it is so there is I'll put my light on here that's my nam wanti parlor that's the first piece I ever made and um it's like that's about seven years ago and um you know I tried to make it as perfect as possible and I no longer really do that. Like now I spend a lot more time sort of doing more artistic and imp impressionistic stuff, but this was sort of the, the challenge was to make a perfect replica. And <clears throat> I feel like I, I got, you know, I think I got pretty close. Um, you can actually see a, a comparison on my Instagram feed at City Folk Studio. If you go down a little lower onto the feed, you can see kind of a, split screen situation but um this was all hand painted and even in the window which i've learned some new techniques since then of how to create really really tiny type um on plastic using water slide decals and stuff but you know typography is everywhere you know these really great boxes um the graffiti in the back you know it's it's a great combination of so many different things and um, yeah, I'm really proud of this piece. And I think unless somebody wants to pay me like $50,000 for it, I think I'll keep it forever. <laughs> so just, just putting that into the universe. 
Um, the piece I just finished, so this, nobody has seen this. So this is your, you guys are getting a preview is um, actually of a place in Los Angeles that somebody loves and commissioned. And it too has some little moments of typography and signage. Um, a lot of times with these pieces, what I end up doing is using as high res photos as I'm able to get, unless I'm able to take the pictures myself, like with Namwa, because it's in New York City, I was able to go down and take pictures and have high res images, but sometimes I have to rely on the internet for that. And so what I'll do is I'll take a picture and sort of like, you know, this, and I'll figure out the scale. And then I'll, in Photoshop, sort of recreate all of the signage. So I'm really basically redrawing everything. Sometimes I do it by hand uh, in like black ink and then scan it in. And sometimes I do it straight in Photoshop. It just depends. You know, same thing with like the window and the decals and stuff like that. So as you can see, that light there. Actually, that window is not accurate. So also the other thing is the windows change depending on when the photograph was taken. So this is actually a more recent picture of the restaurant and there's the recreation. Danielle, um, can I, can I, can I yeah. just ask a question as a, as a British English speaker? Is, is, what is kebab? Is that kebab or like what it's is that? It's kebab. Yes, it's, it's kebab. kebab. Okay, I've never yeah, seen yeah. it written like that. So we, yeah, for translation for <laughs> for for um, yeah. British English speakers. Yeah, no problem. I think this restaurant is um, uh, Armenian, so that is the uh, that's how I guess they they spell it. Okay, um, so our, our ones would well typically in in London where I'm from, it's the Turkish and Greek. So we have yeah kebab. Interesting. Right. Thank you. Yeah, you know, fun fun times with um with different culture. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's basically that's a brand new piece, and um, that was a lot of fun to make, and I'm gonna deliver that to the client um hopefully next week. And um, you know why when I when I created the the mini, which I no longer have this because it was purchased by a private collector, which. Although it's nice to make money and be able to pay my rent, I do wish sometimes I could keep some pieces because they are so, so special. Um, but, you know, capitalism and all, it's kind of a bummer. Um, so this piece really came about because, as is discussed in Sam's amazing article, um, wonderfully written and curated of so many great artists, um, my mom was a sign painter for many years from when I was very little to about, I'd say she was a sign painter from probably about 73 or four to about 84, 19, as in 1900. <laughs> and um, I was surrounded by typography my whole life. She eventually became a graphic designer. She was a interior designer. She did all kinds of stuff. And even now she's still super artistic and has amazing handwriting and makes, she's into watercolor right now. That's her, that's her passion. Um, but having grown up with one shop paint and brushes and fluorescent paper and rolls of, 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 of tracing paper and the weird yellow tracing paper that everybody used to use. And, um, you know, her always cleaning the brushes with the turpentine, like all of those things are very, like, very visceral from my childhood. And so when I just, and I follow a ton of sign painters on Instagram, I have always done that because of course I love, I love sign painting and I love their vernacular and I love topography. And it just sort of occurred to me like, oh, I should include a lot of the sign painters that I love, like somehow in the, in this image, which is why I was able to, you know, sort of make this fun grid. But then of course Sam was like, oh, we should make a grid on the back and identify everybody. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> So it literally took me like a full day going back through all of my screenshots and, and, you know, Google searches and whatever to, but we did it. We met and he added to a few of them as well and was able to find and did some, did some um, community outreach to find out some of the pieces. Cause you want to get, was, was it worth it though, Danielle? It was worth it, Sam. Of course <laughs> it's art, man. It was totally worth it. It looks dope and you did a great job. And, 
I wasn't angry at all, but there was a point when I was angry at myself because I do, I do um, pride myself on being a very organized person as seen by this insanity because I have to be. And so I was like, just disappointed that I hadn't kept better track, but we did it. So yay for us. <laughs> can you, can you just explain briefly, like, how, you know, how, like, I don't know, let's say the, the, um, Peter paid protect your neck 1982 like how do you go from seeing that to it appearing in your miniature like like technically yeah yeah so basically most of my stuff is either I'm making it completely from scratch out of whatever I have at hand or I'm you know finding a high-res version of it and then scaling it down and the biggest trick that I think a lot of people don't know about if they don't know, you know, Photoshop or any kind of photo altering program is that you have to work with the highest res image you have at the highest resolution, and then you shrink it. And that's how you retain all of the detail. So it causes very big document sizes and sometimes crashes your Photoshop and what have you, but it's the way to go. So a Peter Pig thing like that, I would say take a screen cap uh, from my Mac, which I'm not really sure why, and I'm sure someone could mansplain this to me at some point, but when you do a screenshot versus a drag of the JPEG that's like on a page, it's much higher res. So that's a little trick. I don't know why. So it's like usually two megabytes or something for that image. So anyway, you take that, you bring it into Photoshop and you change it to 1200 DPI. And then you scale it to like half inch by one inch or whatever the scale is. And, um, that's really how you do it. And it makes it look super real and super, you know, amazing. The other trick is, and this is the things you learn when you make miniatures, is about like scale of like material. So, you know, a piece of paper at 124th scale, which means a half inch equals a foot in real life. Um, paper doesn't look the, the same. <laughs> like it's too thick. It looks almost like board at the small size. So what I do is I wet the back of a piece of like Xerox paper that I use in my printer. I like dampen it just a tiny bit and then I sort of scrape it and kind of roll off the layer of paper. And that makes the paper look really super thin. Or you can also find thin paper, but oftentimes with my printer, I find it easier to just print on regular paper. So these are like all the little things that you have to kind of do. Um, you don't have to, but that I choose to do to sort of further the magic of the miniature. I used to be, like I said, with sort of the non thing, I used to be much more obsessed with things looking like super hyper, hyper realistic and like tricking, like, oh my God, I can't believe that's real small. But now it's like, you know, I just want it to look cool. So if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't, um, yeah, if it doesn't, you know, look exact, I'm not going to die. But I do, I do prefer to, obviously, if I'm going to do someone's artwork, I'm going to try to use their real artwork and, and reproduce it as best I can. So that's how I did those, those things. And then the rest of the stuff that I make, you know, is like I said, is kind of from anything. So like these little one shot, I have one, one, I don't know if you can see that one left, one shot um, cans, you know, I went to Dick Blick or Blick Art, shout out. And um, I took pictures of the one shot can. So I wanted like a really high res version. And then I made them really small and I made a whole sheet of them. And I, I think I painted them with some uh, matte Mod Podge so they would stay kind of, you know, they wouldn't wear off, the ink wouldn't wear off the paper. And then I have um, all kinds of like, I have like straws. So like, this is actually a pretty good width for the can. So that's probably what I use. I can't remember now, but that's probably what I use is I cut the straw and I just put the, I wrapped the wrapper around it and that's how I made the cans. And then I glued them to paper so that I can make a little lid. And then I was like, oh, the lid has like grooves on it. So like I used like a little tool and like made the grooves and then painted it silver. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you know, you sit here for, you know, 10 hours and you're like it's an interesting way to spend some your life but <laughs> I love it um and then with other things in this piece for example um you know I use real wood like this is made out of the um the drafting table is made out of basswood which is a really nice kind of fine-grained wood that a lot of model makers use and like train 
model train people and stuff. And I just, you know, looked at a picture of it. I looked, oh, sorry, I kind of just eyeball it and kind of whatever, figure out. And like, I actually made one and it sucked. So I scrapped it and made another one. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to play with, you know, proportion and scale. Um, then, you know, I used some paint and messed it up and sanded it down and then used a little more paint and messed that up and sanded it down. And you kind of start to layer things and make things look dirty and older. Um, and a lot of times when I make like cans, like silver kind of tin cans, I'll actually use, um, I'll use a uh, soda can that I cut up, which I have to be really careful because I have sliced myself on that, but that's how I use, you know, so it's like a lot of stuff that's just sort of laying around that I use that are like, I have like a whole thing, you know, here of like scraps, <laughs> literally just scraps and inevitably like one of these things will come in handy you know just like weird little like apps for screws or something or you know um washers you know spring I mean who knows you know I don't know I don't know what it'll become but it'll become something um at some point you know here's like a small ladder that I made that I never finished and I was like oh you know I'll go back to that or I'll use it for something else um and you know Anyway, so that's a lot of like the detail of the things that I do here. And, you know, it's, it is really hard. <laughs> I mean, obviously there's harder things in the world, but it is hard working in this small space. And my wife is the most loveliest supportive person. She is, you know, has a real job that has like real meetings on real Zoom and she works from home. And sometimes it is like, I'm sanding something and she's like, you can't sand that right now. <laughs> I'm on a call with the job that gives us our health insurance. And I'm like, got it. Okay, I'll take a break from sanding. And of course, like, I'm happy to do it. But sometimes it's like, I really need to be sanding this thing so I can get to the next step. So that can be like a challenge. Um, sometimes I literally close these doors and I like hold myself in here and like we'll spray paint something because the smell can be really bad. Probably not great for my health, but as long as her and the dog are healthy, I think that's what's really the most important. Um... And what else? I mean, yeah, I mean, I use a lot of, I use a lot of the same materials and things that I feel like sign painters use. I use a lot of the same, you know, I use the kinds of some paints and some, you know, all different kinds of tools and stuff. So I feel like it's a very kind of similar world in a way. And um, I, I do take commissions. Thank you, Sam. And that is a big part of my of my business. Um, people generally find me on Instagram and reach out to me and ask me, you know, would you be doing, would you be willing to do this? Sometimes I don't have the time because I'm on in the middle of like three other things, or sometimes it's like a piece that I don't think would fit my ability. I'm, I feel really good about the fact that I know now where my strengths are and that I can. Um, you know, I can tell someone, you know, I don't think I'm the right person for you. Actually, Chris Raley, who is an amazing artist who's going to be on later, who does these incredible mini signs. Uh, I've sent a couple of people his way. I don't know if it's ever come into anything, but I've definitely recommended him and said, you know, listen, that's definitely not my expertise. I think, you know, because I don't do any 3D printing. I don't have a Glowforge. I don't have any of that stuff. And if I did, I could do a lot more like finer work that someone like Chris can do amazingly well. And so I'll, you know, I'll often send people to other artists that I know and hope that it turns into something because I'm not, you know, not everything is in my wheelhouse. Um, I'm stopping commissions now, unless something huge comes my way, but even then I don't, because I really want to do some personal work that I'm hopefully going to have like a solo show here in New York with a guy that I know who has a uh, art uh, gallery and so um that is actually going to include a lot of signage so watch this space as they say um and what it's going to be mostly at this point the, the concept of it is the show is going to be called crackdown and it's going to be about the era in new york city of when um giuliani became the mayor which he got elected in 93, he was the mayor from 94 to 2001. And um, kind of how he ruined the city, you know, and, and sure that's up for debate, but as a long lifelong New Yorker, I feel pretty strongly about it. So, um, you know, 
people probably from all over the world know that Times Square ha had always been a place of sort of like ill repute and, you know, triple X theaters and sex shops and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, it sort of became sort of dignified in the 90s. Literally, there was a Disney store that opened there. And um, a lot of other chains sort of came in and, and Applebee's, it was terrible. Uh, you know, leave it to America to, you know, ruin everything. So I, um, I want to kind of document that time of like right before all of that stuff kind of went away. And there's a lot, it's like, it's all signage. I mean, it's all like sort of these peep show signs and sort of like girls and like, you know, the sort of theater marquees and things of that nature. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this Zoom or uh, familiar with a amazing artist, Jenny Holzer, which basically all her stuff is very text-based. And um, she did a crazy, amazing um, installation basically in the 80s and 90s maybe, um, where she put up her own sort of messages on these marquees of these sort of like dilapidated theaters before they had all been sort of torn down. And um, her last name is H-O-L-Z-E-R, uh, Jenny Holzer, if you want to look her up. And so I was very inspired by her. I'm going to actually reach out to her and kind of ask her permission. I'd like to do a miniature of one of the marquees with her messaging on it, because I think that would be really cool. But anyway, this is sort of what I'm going to be working on starting essentially this week, now that I've finished the kebab uh, mini. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think I'm going to use lights. I'm going to do some sort of faux neon. I mean, uh, there's ways of doing miniature neon with some different kinds of um, this stuff called EL wire, which I, I've heard is crappy. Um, I think Chris has actually played around with it. Um, I know my friend David, who's um, an amazing miniaturist, David Miniatures, if you want to check him out at David Miniatures. Um, he's done some really cool light sign stuff um there's with leds and things like that so i'm really excited to sort of get into that world of like miniature neon um it might make me crazy but that's 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 sort of the thing is that i'm always trying to kind of you know challenge myself and feel excited about what i'm working on and commissions are amazing and i feel very fortunate to be an artist who's been paid to make art i mean that's a really beautiful thing it took me um, like 45 years to get there. <laughs> so I feel really proud and, and humbled by like when people reach out to me and they're like, I would like to pay you good money to make this thing. You know, that's really exciting. Um, so, you know, as much as I love doing that, I really also want to kind of do this show about this era in New York that has been very, it was very important to me in sort of my young life. So, um, and signage, like I said, because of my mom has been a huge part of my life. So it's another way to sort of incorporate that. And um, I hope I hope it all turns out good and I don't drive myself too crazy. Um, hopefully we are going to be moving in the next year or so. And the goal is to have a much bigger studio. But you know, my heart will always be with the Cludio. So um, I think that's pretty much my whole jam. Um, Sam, do you have any questions or? That's fa fascinating, Danielle. And can you can you um, make sure that I'm on a mailing list or some such <laughs> uh, for when the show comes? Because I keep a, uh, a page of event listings, yeah. exhibitions and so on on the website. So it'd be great to have that on there, uh, especially with the signage themes running through it. I've um... Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. Uh, I've posted links in the chat to to some of the other artists that you've mentioned. Is there, is there anyone else besides um, Chris who we have coming on later? Uh, he's out. In fact, he's going to close the event for us later. Uh, right. Chris Riley at Route Nine Signs. I've put Jenny Holzer and David Miniatures in the chat. Uh, right. Maybe one or two other people working in the world of miniatures with with that signage and lettering sure yeah on. yeah one of my two of my really who I, I say good friends I've never met them in real life but we've become Instagram friends like you and I um is uh Ryan Thomas Monahan who I'm sure a lot of people know um that, that are in that know about miniatures his he's at um at what the hell but I think it's like what underscore the underscore hell if I'm not mistaken and then um Joshua Smith street artist uh who is uh 
Australian guy. And both of them do a lot of the same kind of stuff. They do a lot of commissions and they do a lot of like, a lot of, there's a lot of signage and a lot of great, great, um, yeah, great stuff. They're amazing. They're amazing. And they're just lovely people. I mean, everyone I've met in that world is really, and like, and sign painting, honestly, I just like lovely, lovely, lovely people. You know, it's, it gives you, it uh, gives you hope. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. I, you know, I, I, there's all these other kind of niches, you know, you've got sign painting and this world of miniatures that all sound kind of mutually supportive and uh, you yeah. know, not if you ask and are doing stuff, people are going to share share what yes. they know and try to kind of elevate everybody um at the same time absolutely yeah there's not a lot of um a lot of gatekeeping and i sort of, i've had people you know text me be like how do you do this how do you do that and i'll write them some crazy long thing They're like oh my god thank you and it's like well of course because i know when i was starting i was like how the hell did that person do that <laughs> you know yeah. and you're like desperately searching and looking on youtube or whatever and sometimes there is a lot of great stuff out there for these kinds of things but sometimes you just need somebody to be like Go to 1200 dpi and then scale down or whatever the tip you know whatever the tip is and you're like oh that's so easy i great okay done i can do that you know so yeah it's really cool it's cool to it's if anyone out there has any questions you know i'll stay in the chat and i'll be happy to answer questions but certainly please feel free to reach out to me anytime i uh, i love to share whatever i know well um well thank you i i'm uh, yeah if we could if we could do that so danielle's going to stick around in the chat for a little bit but um just thank you and uh, so fascinating to see the studio i love i love seeing where people work and uh, I know, this, it's fun. This, yeah. this medium of zoom lets us kind of whiz around the world and do it so yeah. um so sure. great to see where the uh, where the sign painter studio miniature emerged from